tonight's shop conversation. Some people don't even want to touch it. I don't know. I just, I'm sitting here working in my tackle today and I'm thinking about things and I'm seeing posts and it, this is a lot of referring to, to, to the Keith Poche incident in, in the open at Toledo Bend. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But as a competitor, I always call the tournament directors to ask, am I missing something or do I not have all the information I need to be doing my job? Am I, am I not doing enough? Is there something that I'm not taking advantage of or, or capitalizing on an opportunity? So I've did a lot of homework, but the first thing I want to bring up is you see this right here? This is the 2023, this is the Elite Series Rules. And folks, it's a bunch of them. Got my boy Brandon Pollinick on there's page after page after page. And the Bassmaster opens, and they have a booklet pretty much just like this. And when I agree to fish bass, I sign this. It means I sign and I agree, and that means that I know it. I've, I've looked at it, I've studied it. It also means that I will abide by it to the best of my ability. So I've notified them that I'm aware of the rules in here. Now, do all of our guys read the rules from front to back? No. Have I ever read them from front to back? No. Have I studied them a lot in individual order, looking at them things, just to make sure because no competitor wants to leave anything on the line. You know, uh, you want to do what you can, but I try not to get in the gray area. And I'm going to start this because I know, I know already somebody's already, you know, you just against, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against, personally against anybody. I'm against everybody who breaks the rules. That's me. That's my stance. Or do you think I have never done something? Do you think I've never pushed a no wake zone? Or you think I've never ran one accidentally? You got, I have. You think I've never had too many fish in the boat? Had to turn myself in. So I, I'm aware that we've all made mistakes. But in our organization, when you go through these rules, it talks about this. Bet you guys didn't know this. If another angler sees an angler doing a rules violation, it is his responsibility to notify Chris Bowes, Lisa Townledge, Hank Weldon, or, or per the rules, I'm held accountable. It's called policing your own. So it makes me mad when someone puts me in a position to have to say something. And I've done it before. And it, I don't like it, but that's what the rules say. So for everybody who's had their opinion on Toledo Bend, opinion and all of what's happened, Unless you sign this or read this, it doesn't really matter. Because you don't know what it says on the inside. You hear, you hear bits and pieces, but this is how it goes. And in these rules, it talks about a lot of things. It talks about an angler cannot use a chainsaw, remove trees from private property. He can't, he can't block a passageway and then reopen it. He can't destroy private, private property. He, you know, there's a lot of things that's in there under conservation, which I think is important because look where we're at right now in fishing. Just a few weeks ago, we had someone pull a gun on somebody. It wasn't one of our guys, was just guys that are fishing at the Alabama River. A guy comes down with a shotgun because people are fishing around his dock. He, he may be right, he may be wrong, I don't know. That's for the course to decide. But we get that a lot. I get that a lot when people don't want me around their dock. But it's, as, as a bass fisherman and a sportsman, if, it's, if the law allows me to fish there, I have to say, hey, I'm allowed by law to fish here. I don't want any trouble, but I'm allowed by law. So we got to look back at, like, where's all this anger coming from? So I think as bass fishermen, especially professionals, when you put your jersey on and you're out here in this rap boat and, I, and I'm fishing, it's my responsibility to, be a, to try to represent bass and the shield the best that I can because that's what we signed up for. And that goes for MLF. It goes for Major League Fishing. It goes for anybody in any organization out there. If you fish it, you should love it enough to represent it right. So with homeowners being more picky, landowners being more picky than ever, that's where we're getting to. So like this leads me to say this. This, this incident out there at, at Toledo Bend, that was a wildlife management area. It does have a roller system on it. He didn't use it. He jumped it. Okay, as cool as TikTok may think that was, it's against the rules. Can't, can't go across dry ground. Period. That being a sandbar or a road. You cannot take your boat and go across dry ground. 
Some rules in some states say if you can float it, you can boat it. Doesn't mean if you dig it deep enough, I can enter. Because the problem with that is, and I've seen this, so before guys say, because I'm sure somebody's already typing, going, you're just against the little man. No, 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 no. I'm all about the little man. That, that don't bother me. Like, I'm just about what, what we got to deal with in this. Is it in here? But see, this ain't the first time this has come up. See, way back before TikTok and everybody thought it was cool to jump something, I watched two guys, Gary Klein and Randy Blockett, dig into a duck refuge at Old Hickory. Duck refuge. The problem is once they dug in and entered it, caught them, and they did some tricky boat driving with big boats, it drained part of the duck refuge. So when you enter some situation like that, you decide to dig somebody's property, and that's what you run into, and it, it, each state is different. Is it a trinkle of water? Is it a napkin of water? Is it a dry ditch because there's a drought? But once I go in there and say Gerald Swindle started digging, and I dug and dug and dug and dug and dug until I could get my boat in there, I have changed the bottom level of the pool I'm trying to enter. So it's, it's, it's and it, each situation is different. Let's just say if we done that, and that guy that has that, that, that uh, backwater area, and it may be connected to the lake, but he uses it for, to, for irrigating his crops. And now I dug it out and it dropped two foot lower than it's supposed to be, because that's what's gonna happen when you dig it out. Did I affect his crops? So see, when, 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 you, when you see that stuff, you always have to think past the initial, what does it look like? You know, and then each state's different. So landowners do in some states, and I'm pretty sure in Louisiana, a lot of places it's like that. They own the dirt under the water. They own everything around it dry. So when you, when you shovel, cut, or remove something, that's deemed private property. It's complicated. Every state is different. Every state is different. Have we all tried to take my big 250 Mercury and plow into a ditch and push over a tree? I've absolutely done it. But if my boat can float and I can get in on the power of my motor, I don't have an issue with it. But, so people will say, well, what's, what's, what, what's wrong with, with jumping a road outside of it being in the rules? The danger issue. It's dangerous. We are the leaders in bass fishing. That being MLF and bass masters. So what am I telling high school kids when they see that? Hey dad, let's buy a boat and start jumping roads. It's, it's, a, it's a really jagged sword right there on what's right and what's wrong. And what are we, what are we portraying? You know, uh, I think in my opinion, which doesn't really matter, you always have to think of what the next two or three steps is gonna be after this happens. You know, and in these rules, it talks about anytime I have a question about where I want to fish, even in the opens, I am supposed to directly ask the tournament director. Ask first. Don't ask for forgiveness later because that's kind of what happens is once it happens, it's too late. If you ask the tournament director, and I know people say, well, maybe he asked, and maybe the tournament director said he could jump roads. I talk to, to tournament directors, all of them. It has never been said that you could jump dry ground. It's illegal. It's illegal. So with these rules, we try to learn them. And the elite guys try to go by them. So before someone, you know, goes out on them and says, man, you just, no, I, I, listen, I call directly because I want to know. Because if it's legal for me to take my Phoenix with this 250 and jump something and get in and catch some fish, that's something I got to consider in, in, into a game plan. But if it's illegal, I also want to know so I don't make that mistake. That's part of the game. In racing, when somebody does something on the track and they push it and they say, hey, this is still legal, the other guys learn it. But the problem was if you skate in the great area a lot, things are going to happen. So, I, you know, I would tell all high school anglers, college anglers, even elite anglers, man, that's what we want to fight to stay out of. So, you know, it's the tournament ruling in this book. It says the tournament director has a final decision. And it's his interpretation. So always think about that. I know that there's a lot of mixed opinions out there and there's a lot of rumors about what we should do, what we shouldn't do. But I look at it in the big picture. That, that happened and it, it, it could show you how out of hand it can get and how like not asking properly, knowing that you're going to go in there, buying your permit, you're anticipating going in there. You got to check. Now, so, so I've, I've even seen on, on videos people say, well, if you jump out of the water or you DQ, come on now, come on now, come on now. You stick your cotton candy in mud and eat it. 
jumping out of the water in a wave and landing back in there, you, land, you jumped out of tournament waters, back into tournament waters. You didn't intentionally jump dry ground. So I've seen somebody say, what about Ray Hanselman? He, he, he bow hooked his boat at Seminole, ran up on an island. It wasn't intentional. He didn't leave the ramp and say, hey, Marshall, hold tight on turn three. I'm about to hook this bad boy and we're going to go up there and check for chiggers. wasn't intentional. If your intentions were to, to do that, you have to ask permission. You have to know. So I hope this sheds some light. And once again, I'm sure people are already typing going, hey, man, you're just against the guy in the, in the aluminum boat. Let, let me tell you, I'm not, because I'm going to go ahead and make one reference to this. Y'all know these, uh, a guy named John Cox? Yeah, he's in an aluminum boat. Any more questions? See, that's, that's how I feel about it. I just think we as professionals should lead by example. We should read our rules, and it happens to everybody. So before you say, because I've seen this on a comment, if that had been Gerald Swindle, he's bass as baby. Wouldn't nothing happen. I'm going to go ahead and tell you all this and leave this video here. Last year, you watched my nephew, Trey Swindle, get DQ'd at Chesapeake Bay. But it's because he didn't have enough insurance. It wasn't that he didn't have any insurance. He didn't have the uh, prepared or uh, proper amount. So you know what I did? I was at Key West. I called my nephew. I said, you own it, nephew. You own it. If you broke the rules, whether we agree with Hank or not, we signed that book. You signed that book that said that this is what's going to happen. So that's how it's got to go. And I know what y'all are saying, well, they would have never done that to you. Well, go back in time. I'm the only angler that's ever been DQ'd from the classic from running by somebody, and you can't find it in that book nowhere. Nowhere. But if the tournament organization thought it was too dangerous, they got me for it. So you think back on that it before you start typing and saying, hang on now. G got DQ'd for running by somebody who motioned him on and got DQ'd, and I was in this place going in the last day because they deemed it too dangerous. So when I see somebody jumping a road or making highlight reels jumping stuff to enter backwaters, do you think it doesn't bother me a little bit? How is that fair to me? How is it fair to the other guys? So hope this sheds some light. It's got, I know there's a million stories out there, but I promise y'all, I did my homework, I've called the tournament directors, because I always want to know. Because when I get to Sabine, if there's something out there that I can do to gain an edge, and I've studied it, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm, I'm going to fish to the limit. I just don't want to go past the limit. So by doing that, by information gathering, learning, talking, calling Hank, calling Chris Bowes, calling Lisa, and they'll all tell you, I've worried them to death on stuff because I just want to know. I built a plate for my trolling motor to hold my wiring harness, uh, Hennessy built it for me. It was awesome. But I can also stand on it. It's deemed illegal. So I can't stand on it. You know what I did? I call it. Hey, is this illegal? Yep, it's illegal. Okay. So there you go. Hope it sheds some light. Good fishing to everybody. I'm not against anybody. I'm against everybody that breaks the rules.